<laughs> now, he, I'm being fully transparent today. We're reviewing a game that we lost. <laughs> um, I, I, there's two things that come to mind when I think of this game. First, at the very end, we just, like, our brain lagged, and we just walked. We saw Rift Herald, and we were like, oh, well, let's walk towards the back of it so we can get the eye. And then, like, it did the huge swing, so its body shifted. So I just kind of kept walking. I was like, oh, well, let me just continue to walk, so I'll still be in position to hit the eye. And then I'm misfortune, and I'm standing in the middle of their fucking team, so I just immediately die, and then they push to end. So that that's the thing that sticks out. But, if I recall correctly, there was, like, two games, I think, that we had, um, or two kills that we gave up that game, or just, like, missed, that we shouldn't have, that it should have been easy for us to grab. So I'm a little hazy on the details, but, um, I want to, I want to go ahead and review this game. So we're going to, we're going to give this one a good old download, and we're going to pop her open and watch the replay here and see, see if we can identify those mistakes. See if, in fact, there was two kills, or that's just me being insane in the brain. Let me, of course, make sure you guys can see the draw tool. Let's uh, open this up and swap it over from here to here. There it is. Wonderful. All right. So this is our second game back to ADC. Where we're trying out all the different roles. We're trying to find our place after the mid-season patch. I just, I can't find it, man. I don't know where I'm comfortable at. It's not even support. Like, I'm just not comfortable anywhere right now. Feels, feels weird. Um, so what, what's, what to say about this game at the start? I mean, we're up against a Draven, so it was like a little bit of a tough lane at the start. And they definitely out-sustain us, but I was going to look for opportunities with the double up. To try and chunk out Nami to focus, make her focus healing herself. So I was looking for that. Obviously just double up anyone I can, bouncing off the minions to crit them. To make Nami burn through her mana pool. Well, power through this a little bit. It was an uninventful start of the game. Now, this was a strange pink ward. I don't often see supports also like start with a pink ward like I do. Uh, but when I do, they place it in a very strange location. Um, so let's just get right into it and start reviewing the micro of the laning phase here. So I'm swapping aggro between minions to keep the, like, new target allocation damage on them. Probably could have doubled up there. Okay, I went for it. Um, I'm not so sure about that E. I think E is right level 2 to get some good trades, but I stepped back into a bubble here if I had stepped forward. Might, maybe not got a kill there, but we got some additional damage on her there. They got a good Q there. He used to just gap close like that, so that was working out. It seemed okay. An okay start so far to the lane. We gotta play it kind of aggressively like that. If Draven's gonna sit back and catch axes and try and stack axes in the back and find minions, we gotta go in on Nami like that. But it drains my mana pool so hard. Maybe I should be a little bit more reserved with the E and wait for Galio to go in and use the E on top of his taunt. So at this point, I, I saw the low mana and I was like, alright, I'm just gonna let him shove it in. Yeah, you're throwing out some harass. I think I hit by another bubble there. And, like, that's really bad, because... Let's actually review that, so... So I'm going in, just last hitting. Look for the double up there, it goes to minion. In the minion line, I get kind of screwed just by standing there, because, look, so I can walk... I can walk forward this way, still towards her. Um, let me actually redraw that. So I was here when I first turned, right? So I can start walking this way and get bubbled and create distance from Draven, which was the thought. Just walk further away from Draven so he can't get a couple axes off on me. Or I could have walked, like, forward this way was the thought at the time. But there's no reason I can't just walk down. If I walk down here, I can probably just step right outside of this ring and auto-attack Nami. And then probably chunk out that much HP. And then just back off and just retreat here as soon as Draven, like, 
it'll come naturally through this axe catch. But I can just, as soon as I dip and hit her with a couple autos, maybe even a Q, then I can just back off. So there's no reason I should be this far back here, taking this bubble. And as soon as I see Galio going in with a taunt like this, after the bubble I need to be walking in. So I was still walking this way even before the Draven Axes hit me. And then this is like half the time they're taunted. More than half. Three quarters of the time they were taunted before I start turning the right way. Make sure I open up with E on to both of them. And then I do end up getting the kill here. But like, this could have been a double kill. Especially after like, we chase him really hard. It's unfortunate that we both use our summers here. And this was also just like, I saw him flash so I just assumed that I could get him with flash. I didn't have a good shot on him on my screen. I probably shouldn't have flashed. I should have just taken his flash for free. I didn't know that he had healed there, so that's less bad than I thought originally. But if I if I had just gone in when that taunt was up, or like dodged the bubble aggressively into Nami, we almost certainly would have been able to get a kill on Draven there as well. So not that bad. I mean, we still got the kill, and I was able to get BF Sword on the first pack, so that's good. The last hitting was a little bit off this game too, but it's okay. Again, trying to create the shove. Throw the E there, because I know Nami's in the brush somewhere, and she's either about to pop out right there, or she's going to have to walk through it and get slowed. And as the latter, I was still able to get a couple autos off on her. I followed a little bit too far forward. I was thinking I could get one more auto attack on her before she backed off. But instead, I just ate a Draven auto attack for free there, so that was a bit of a mistake. I need to just sort of accept when some of these out of range. Let me heal up the poke. As soon as I see that uh, plant get popped, I back away, and then sure enough, we saw him on the ward. Then I think the ward dropped, actually, or he cleared it. So Galio's pushing out. And I don't think we actually should uh, swap this camera off here. Yeah, I don't think we have vision where he's at, so we think he's coming for a gank. So I'm just, like, hanging out. Galio might have been able to go in if I positioned more forward there. Um, he was coming back from like checking the river and if I had like baited them to go in on me right when he was arriving he might have been able to get a really good initiation on the Draven. See right here as soon as I see him going in like that I stand here. That's great but then unfortunately fucking Graves is here so I'm like alright well time to run. This is actually a really good sidestep here. I'm waiting just Graves love to get that ult so I was just waiting to sidestep that and I was Pretty well done. But then I just fucking, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I was doing my own horn there a little bit. I forgot I just kind of hung out for the Draven ult afterwards. Because look at this. What am I doing? What am I doing right now? There's no reason. I should just be like further walking away or like positioning kind of awkwardly, like not quite in the brush to dodge stuff like that. And just, there's no reason. There's no reason. I just eat the ult. There's no reason why. Unfortunately, I've been trying to make the play camp pull it off. But. So that was bad. So we've already probably, probably a kill miss. And definitely a kill we gave up for no reason. So that's already a lot of, and this is a game that snowballed out of control at the start. So if we could have prevented some of that and got the game going a little bit more in our favor, it would have had a cascading effect along the way. So looking for an opportunity to get Draven before Nami gets back. Unfortunately, we see the scuttles already taken, so we can't uh, gank through the river, gank mid. I just gotta play back here and relax while my support's not there. I don't quite want to go on Draven because Draven's just like, he's already got Death Stance completed and I've just got components. I've got a little bit of armor because I'm going to go for GA first and then uh, Ninja Tabby because they're a full physical team. But I don't have any of that completed yet, I just got a couple cloths, so... I think better staying in that bush and trying to get an early trade. And I just go for a look there with my E to see if we can chase him. Um, so actually, let's review that. So 
I go for the E, and I start to back off. But then I see Ari's rotating down, so I'm like, all right, fuck it, we're all in. So I'm pinging out this, uh, the assistants. Galio probably just didn't see Ari was coming. And I actually flash E here, and then open up with my ult. Hoping that Ari could have, like, turned him into my ult, but it's not that big a deal. The big deal is that, unfortunately, we just aren't able to make this work. And we burn, like, heal, a flash, an ult, two ults, another flash on me, too. Like, that was way too fucking bloodthirsty. And the reason was, like, we're behind, so we gotta kind of make a... We gotta go into desperation mode and try and make a play, and then, like, I don't have any mana for anything. I think Galio just, like... Is struggling with map awareness, but that's okay. We struggle with map awareness too. We get a flashy recall <laughs> right as that wave comes in. Um, but anyways, we we might have been able to make a play there, but that was probably just a little too greedy, and like we're just feeling the pressure of being behind. And at the end, we blew a bunch of summoners and lost Galio. So that's like two kills we didn't need to give up. At least, because those summoners probably cascaded to more kills later on. And we missed a kill opportunity earlier. On a Draven, too, which matters a lot, because Draven's Mr. Snowball Man. So since we have pretty decent, decent ward coverage, we're pushing it out, trying to get it into the turret. Either deny uh, Draven XP, or if you rotate it elsewhere, it's actually going on the turret. So once we get the taunt here, let's actually review this whole thing, because this doesn't go well. <laughs> it goes alright, but... So Drake dies. I think was that noise. Were they on Drake just now? No, they weren't. Weird. Ignore that. Um, so okay, I throw down the E, seeing that Galio is looking for the taunt, so I'm thinking just the slow, just enough, and it is, just barely on the edge. As soon as I see he's taunted, I open up with the ult, because I want to get the maximum amount, excuse me, maximum amount of time that he's taunted in the ult. And I'm going here looking for an opportunity to auto attack. I'm not actually not quite sure how I got that, I think it was like DFT blocking that. But since Galio had to tank it for so long because I couldn't auto attack him, I had to uh, lose Galio along the way. So that's unfortunate. I, I don't know that that one was as easily preventable. Right now I'm watching the minimap. I see, okay, Yasuo is there. So I'm actually going to hang out here. Okay, now I know Darius is missing. But Darius, I'm not that afraid of at this point. Like, I should be, but I'm just not in the game. Because I have decent enough ward coverage. He's just not super fast or anything. So I'm just going to... Walk on over back to the mid lane. So I don't really have a good item break at this point. So I want to try and make something happen here. Throw down my E to stop from retreating. Throw down some additional damage on the graves. Throw down a pink ward. Control ward, rather. DM gets punished. That always feels nice. <laughs> Once I see that the taunt goes down, as soon as we saw aggro got pulled, we should have immediately turned. I was focusing the turret too long, thinking like, okay, he's a tank. Okay, let's just watch him get punished again. Um, so right here, there's already aggro pulled. And it's because he pulled them, and there's like a little bit of it, uh, the Q already hitting him. So it's as good to dodge the Q, but as soon as I come back, I should turn on to him because they're tanking and they're not retreating, right? Galio was like right here after that happened and has already walked this far forward to try and land the taunt properly and get some auto attacks in. If he had walked, like, I think Ivern retreated a little bit this way to drop out of aggro range. If Galio had joined him and walked that way, then great, I should be focusing the turret. But so long as somebody is tanking the turret, which Galio is right now, I should be immediately be walking forward and focusing Darius right now. I should not at all be hitting the turret. Even though, sure, the turret is going to stop aggroing onto us. Uh, creamy crimes, not every day. We actually have the schedule posted below. If you look below the stream, you can see our schedule. Um, so we can't, we can't make a mistake like this. 
because this turret's going to hit pretty much the whole engagement anyway. It's just Darius is going to stay alive longer. And like, we've got so much damage coming out from Ari's spells as well. Like, he might have still gotten the kill on the Galio there, but again, this turret was doing damage the whole time regardless. So, I, I wound up making like a split decision as an ADC there in focusing the turret down first and then focusing the champion. Like, if I'm going to focus the turret, I need to do that. But that was just the wrong situation. And I think I'm just not used to playing ADC enough to be able to assess those situations quickly and identify properly, like, okay, this is a situation where I go turret, this is a situation where I go enemy. So I walk past uh, the wind wall there just to get some damage on him because I'm feeling confident with my GA and my team coming. I back out this way. I probably should have chased Yasuo down with Ari. But I retreat out this way, or Ivern rather. Retreating towards Ari. And I do flash just to be safe and create distance. Do uh, wind up eating the uh, ultimate there. But I dodged the redemption, so no worries about the GA. Just go back to bot and start shoving around again. Trying to apply that pressure as much as possible. Now this wave already will pre uh, press out, push out that. But Draven's there, so we'll find the back and get back bottom before he pushes it into the turret. Luckily they do get a kill here, but unfortunately Darius like takes him out. And Darius is just getting monster fed. And for some reason, like I just didn't have the presence of mind to realize that Darius was just super fed at this point. But we walk around the safe path here, that's definitely the right choice. This is the moment right here. Where it's like, okay. I want to make sure I'm pop the eye. Oh, hey, the Rift Herald just turned, so the eye is now facing this direction. Well, this auto attack doesn't hit, so let's just stay forward and go auto attack Draven. But then look at how ridiculously out of position I am. Right here, still being able to not be immediately focused and killed is ridiculous. Like, I should have, if I really wanted the eye that bad, I should have, like, walked back here through Galio. But I should have just retreated back. Instead, I walked further into their team. This is just brain dead. And I get hit with the Nagel, and then when I come out of the game, it just doesn't matter. And I'm pretty sure they just run it down. So it comes here. So we get an ace. Yeah, I have an enemy wave coming in the back here, so. I do my best to try and stop it, but. We actually almost do. And it's the hero Nami at the very end that like finishes it off. Like right here. She's the last one up, there's no minions. Plus 50. <laughs> That's what she said in the stream, or the chat lobby afterwards is plus 50. Uh, that tickled me, that one made me happy. So, what were the problems that we had? when? Because we, we've identified that we did in fact um, miss an opportunity for a kill early on. And we, uh, both from our own death and from, like, by proxy with Galio, gave up two kills unnecessarily and, like, a slew of summoners later on. So I think the reason those happened was because when we were positioning in lane, we, we were, like, kind of indecisive in how we like walked we would walk away thinking like okay let's just mitigate damage on ourselves like a tank and i think that's from a little bit of like playing a lot of jungle and a lot of like a little bit of sprinkling of top and like a sprinkling of tank supports we've got still kind of the tank mindset in and i shouldn't be that like person who's just like retreating constantly and like letting themselves get chipped along the way or get a little bit of cc along the way and hopefully not die from it as a carry, if I'm, like, about to get it all in or, like, CC'd, I should just walk forward and all in myself because I have damage. I have a lot of damage. And not making the most use out of that is very wasteful. And as a jungler, I'm very used to, as a former jungle main, <laughs> I'm very used to thinking about, okay, where does my presence on the map pressure just by being there? And what objectives am I trying to rotate around? 
Uh, what things can we sneak? What kind of vision control can I help us achieve? But as an ADC, I need to think about, okay, what kind of damage output do we need? Um, to make this trade a one trade for us, what do I need to do in this fight? And at what point do I recognize that like, okay, like this is like, I can't make this engagement happen because I have no engage tools. I have summoners, but that's about it. And when we chase that Draven really hard, we burned all our summoners because that was our only engage tools. Like, and our E, kind of an engage tool, an anti-retreat tool, kind of. Um, but there was no reason for that. Um, and then we were summonerless, and so was Galio. <laughs> um, so I think kind of getting used to the mindsets, transitioning ourselves out of a like less combat focus, less macro or more macro focus mindset. We need to delve back into the micro. Thinking about the micro, thinking about okay, what is our damage potential? What is the amount of damage we're going to receive? Where less about like what the skill shots do and like, oh, well, we can accept that cuz that probably won't kill us. That's a tank mindset. And more of like, hey, can I dodge that skill shot? If I'm vain in that situation, I tumble into Draven and I start attacking him and I like start positioning further and further behind them to condemn him into a wall. Like that's the right play. I shouldn't ever just back away or try and tumble as far back into the bubble so Draven only auto attacks me once. That's like a horrible mindset as a squishy carry. I can't be auto attacked ever for free. I can be auto attacked, but I have to be trading. I have to have to trade. Um, and I think that like trading mindset was just not there for me as a, as an ADC. And the, again, these were our first two games back to ADC after a while. Um, so we are, we are going to have to take some time to come back and get back into the flow of ADC. Um, and I do think we're, we are going to try and just keep on playing some ADC and see how that feels. Cause so far it's feeling good. It's feeling good. You know, we're not necessarily winning. It feels all right. Um, and that's, that's the first step of really like finding the new role. I felt like this kind of weird, like zone <laughs> where I don't really like feel like I'm on a proper role anymore. Sure. There's an OP in the jungle role I play and it's a champion I used to play before she got reworked, but I'm still not, I'm not like feeling my niche, like satisfaction, um, of my kind of role. So we're going to try out ADC. We're going to see if that's our new home in the bot lane and uh, supplement that with a support secondary to just give us more time in bot. And hopefully we can make that work. And hopefully uh, next time uh, we'll actually uh, get some more victories under our belt. Um, yeah, you know, we just got to accept the losses for now a little bit and uh, keep on keep it on. See what we can do, get used to that rule, see if we can make it work. Thanks you for hanging out. Uh, if you know somebody who's a little bit who's transitioning roles maybe right now and uh, needs to like shift their mindset. Maybe they're going from a macro to a micro or to, from a micro to a macro. Uh, maybe this video will be helpful for them. Seeing me kind of struggling with that, uh, feel free to share it with them. Uh, otherwise, thanks for hanging out. Hope you guys learned something yourselves. Uh, let me know if you liked the video. And again, we are being fully transparent today. <laughs> um, shout out, of course, to Extra Credits with the Because Games Matter shirt. I, I wish I could just turn off the green screen temporarily to show you, but you guys know if you know Extra Credits, you know them. So anyways, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys next lesson.